It's Thursday, time for Worldview with Dennis Campbell, Editor-in-Chief of UK Progressive Magazine. Dennis, the last couple days we've seen a number of different things regarding the uh, consulate attack in Benghazi. We saw, number one, more information that the YouTube video, which initially we were told was kind of the catalyst for the entire violence, was more or less inconsequential. But more broadly, we're seeing now kind of a witch hunt style attempt by Republicans to pin everything that happened, the specifics of security at that consulate, on President Obama. Is this going to work? I don't think it will. You've got a huge situation of, as you say, a political witch hunt going on. This guy, Jason Chaffetz, who is a representative from Utah, happens to also be a member of the same church as uh, Mitt Romney, the Republican candidate for the presidency. He also happens to have been working for him ever since he was a young representative. And there's a very close tie. There's actually, I've seen a couple of references in a number of publications to the, the Mormon mafia up there on the hill. That's point one. Point two is that you've got this group of, you've got so many groups that are, in theory, doing oversight. Um, Chaffetz is the chairman of a subcommittee, which is part of oversight and government reform, called National Security, Homeland Defense, and Foreign Operations. I had to look down to get the correct name on that. Uh, this is another one of the many witch hunt sort of uh, committees that have been put together by this 112th Congress, uh, you know, basically saying, no, look over there, there's a terrorist, look over there, there's a terrorist anywhere, but internally inside of the United States at the white supremacist hate groups and the militias. So what's incredible also is that Chaffetz himself has now basically contradicted himself. He said in the hearings that we saw he was being very critical about there wasn't the correct security staffing in Benghazi. At the same time, he went on CNN, and I just watched this clip, and admitted to Soledad O'Brien, yeah, I was one of the people that voted against more funding uh, for, for security there because, hey, we've got to have our priorities straight. So it's because of his vote that there wasn't more security, at least in part. At least in part, yeah. I mean, let's take a look at how this Congress has basically held up every particular bill. Anytime the, the president has won, quote unquote, a, a particular legislative victory, it has come at a cost. And one of the costs in one of these rounds was the uh, funding for protecting U.S. embassies abroad. That reduced the budget a year ago by a hundred plus million dollars, and now this year, the current year, that we're in by more than three hundred million dollars. And basically, what they're trying to do now is they're trying to say that it was all the president and the administrations and the Secretary of State's fault that there was no security in Benghazi. Now, as we said in an earlier segment together, David, this wasn't an embassy in Benghazi. This was a consul office. This was a basically a compound of four very lightly guarded buildings. One would question what the ambassador was even doing there on the anniversary of September 11th because it is a volatile and dangerous place. And the Foreign Service staff know going into virtually any one of their assignments what the risks are. And Benghazi was such a hot point that Gaddafi couldn't even go there. Indeed, he was going there. That's what prompted our involvement to massacre the 98,000 civilians that resided there. So you're dealing with a tribal country in which all central authority has fallen completely to pieces, and you're now blaming the security detail, the administration, the secretary of state, and the president for the fact that there was no security in this building when there could not have possibly been security. So when you have a witch hunt 27 days or 26 days out from the election like this, it has but one purpose. And when you look at who's behind it on the congressional side, it raises a number of very serious and disturbing questions. The other thing that's just kind of being lost in this whole discussion while people are looking to just place blame, particularly on President Obama, his administration, is that the, the reason for this violence even existing in the area and what can be, due to, what can, can be done to actually change that situation, it's not even being discussed. No, it's not. And, and, and let's face it, I mean, when you have a essentially lawless nation, which is what you have in Libya, you have a, you know, it's still a provisional government there. It is largely a, a group of tribes that come together and sort of decide, yes, we're going to work with this one, but we're not going to work with this one over here. You're not going to have the type of central government. Gaddafi was a strong man who threw around a lot of cash, made sure the trash got picked up and the trains ran on time. For this, he was somewhat respected. But when you got out into the far uh, far eastern part of Libya, into Benghazi and, and that area up along the bay there, 
Nobody there was was a fan of Gaddafi, and indeed, you know, this is where he ran into most of his difficulties when he was the leader there. So it's just a uh, an absolutely ridiculous scenario that you have all these uh, leaders up on the hill who can't get together and do things like a budget or pass a jobs bill or any of the other major items that still need to be passed, but can find time when Congress is still again in recess to hold hearings on this. All right, we've been speaking with Dennis Campbell. He is editor-in-chief of UK Progressive Magazine. The new book is Billionaire Boys Election Freak Show. I'm anxiously waiting for my copy in the mail. I will have it hopefully here in studio in time for next week's segment. Uh, Dennis, thanks as always. We'll talk to you next week. Thank you. See you next week.